Let's get ready to mortgage. He is the prince of programs, guru of guidelines, master of matrixes. He puts the fun in funding. Please welcome Mark. Mr. Mortgage, I tell. All right, guys, my name is Mark Itell, and this is the Mr. Mortgage Show. And man, you have landed on the right show on the right day. I am super motivated, highly caffeinated, public school educated, and super, super excited to be with you today. That reminded me of that, uh, what was that song in the movie Grease, Grease Lightning? I'm highly caffeinated, super motivated. Somewhat educated, a grease sliding in. Anyway, guys, Mark Itel here. This is the Mr. Mortgage Show. You're in the right place if you want the data, the tips, the tricks, the strategies, all the info that you need so you can make better real estate and mortgage decisions for you and your family. Guys, we do this each week, and I am joined, as always, by my lovely producer, Jen, who is standing by womaning the Anytime Hotline. She'll get your questions on the air. If you've got questions or comments, call or text 855 855- Four six two seven two nine two. That's eight five five four six two seven two nine two. Affectionately known as the Anytime Hotline. If you prefer to shoot her an email, just head over to MrMortgageRadio.com. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. Scroll to the bottom of the page, click that email icon, and you can shoot her your questions. That way she'll read them on the air for you. Listen, a lot of big news was released this week, and we're going to cover it all. A lot of it is inconsequential to our to our day-to-day decisions. It's, it's interesting. I got into a conversation with somebody who's watching the CPI number, and he's watching all of the pontificating talking heads trying to make a big real estate decision. Well, he's been doing this for two and a half years, convinced the market's going to crash and rates are going to come back down. Well, guys, it's just not happening. And I had a thought when I was listening to him talk, and he's a dear friend of mine. I love the guy, but he'll trip over his own overthinking in every aspect of life. He's the guy on the golf course that will agonize over a club selection. He's got a, you know, a five iron shot over the lake to lay up for a pitch and putt for a birdie. Well, actually, that's not true. He's never putting for birdie, but he'll grab the grass and hold the grass up and drop the blades of grass to try to gauge the wind strength and the wind direction. He's going to lick his thumb and do all of that. And he's going to pick up his three wood and then put it back down and grab his six iron and then grab his five iron. And finally, finally, after an agonizing length of time, he'll get up to the ball and dump it right into the water and then he'll go take a drop and grab a nine iron and do it again and that's what I feel like with some of these conversations I'm having about a 0.2 percent CPI month over month versus a 0.3 guys inflation is still much hotter than the Fed wants the Fed has announced a high likelihood of increases in interest rates And he said he doesn't anticipate cutting until 2025. Guys, that video is from a lecture series that he did right after the last uh, meeting where they paused. I posted that to the Facebook group. Go to MrMortgageRadio.com and click on that Facebook link and you'll see him say it for himself. So anybody who's still waiting for the Fed to signal that inflation's over and hope that rates come back down before they make a decision, you're like my buddy who's going to hit it into the water, who has been hitting it in the water for the last two years and just costing yourself because property values have indicated that they can live through a higher interest rate environment because there's just not enough supply. So guys, prices aren't coming down at the pace everybody had anticipated. They've kind of flattened in a lot of markets and they're still going up in a lot of metros and interest rates are likely going to stay in this range for a while. If you look at what's happening in China, they could stay here for a long while. But anyway, that's a whole nother conversation. What I'm super excited to share with you is we've gotten a ton of phone calls from people who want to sell their property, but they don't want to have to pay a real estate commission and then get nickeled and dimed by a buyer for contributions. And they're just really trying to capitalize on saving as much of this equity for their move as they can. And a lot of people are trying to figure out how to do this for sale by owner, FSBO. You'll hear a lot of people refer to it as FISBO. So we've been working on a program and we've launched it. It's called FISBOzilla, F-S-B-O-Z-I-L-L-A.com. We wrote a book. Everything's up there. Go check out FISBOzilla, F-S-B-O-Zilla.com. 
guys, I get it. You know, I advocate for having a great agent, but a lot of people went through this market cycle and they didn't have great agents. They were advised to pay over the asking price, to pay over the appraised value, to waive their inspections, to waive their finance contingencies, to waive their appraisal contingency. And they ended up overpaying for a house that they didn't really love after they moved into it. And they found a whole host of repairs that needed to be made because the previous seller just wiped lipstick on everything. And they kind of resent that experience. And they're thinking, I need to recoup some of that when I sell. I want to do it myself. Well, guys, it's simple, but it's not easy. And what do I mean by that? Some of the simplest things are not easy to do, but they're not difficult to figure out. So we've figured it out for you. We've got all of the common pitfalls solved for you in the Fizbozilla Pro. Guys, it's free. There's nothing, there's no cost to you if you want to utilize the program. What my goal in the Fizbozilla program is to pre-qualify as many people as I can, because the number one reason for sale by owner transactions fall apart is unqualified buyers. They're unable to get a mortgage. I want to solve that problem for you. And think about it, guys. I'm not, you know, Joan of Arc or Mother Teresa or Gandhi. I get something out of this too. If I can help you sell your property, navigate through it, keep as much money in your pocket as possible. And in turn, I get to pre-qualify three families, four families. I don't know how many people are going to be interested in your home. Well, only one can buy it. Then I've met three or four other people who may need my services in the future. So I'm helping you put as much money in your pocket as possible. And I'm meeting as many people who are out there looking for properties as I can. So it's a win-win. But anyway, it's at F-S-B-O-Z-I-L-L-A, Fizbo Zilla, the commission killer. No offense to all my real estate friends out there. And guys, if you go down this path and you decide you need an agent, we're part of the Really Great Agents Network. I'm happy to refer you to somebody. But if you want to try to go it alone, I get it. You're going to save a load of money. Guys, some of you know that I like to restore old cars, old motorcycles, play with anything that runs that's old. I just, I geek out on that stuff. And I was working on the uh, Lincoln and I couldn't solve a problem. And I asked a group of guys who specialize in restoring these cars and they gave me an answer. They gave me the solution, but it was too simple. I said, that can't work. I kept looking for a more complex solution and I spent hundreds of dollars in tens of hours trying to find that solution. Well, I never did. And I asked a second time and they gave me the same answer. And I asked a third time and they gave me the same. Well, the fourth time that I asked them, they said, Mark, we're not going to answer your question anymore. We've given you the answer. Just try it. Well, guys, it was so simple. It wasn't easy. It was, a you know, three hours under the car, but it was during COVID and we had nothing else to do. So it was quite fun, actually. But after that simple repair, if you will, everything worked perfectly. They solved my problem. Wasn't easy, but it was simple. And guys, man, it saved me a load of money because the only shop I could find that could work on a 60-year-old car with a vacuum line diagram that looks like a spider web was six hours away. I had to ship the car to them, ship the car back and spend several thousand. I would have spent more having that simple repair done than I spent on buying the car altogether. So I get the concept of wanting to do this. And I think we've provided a solution for people who want to try it. So guys, check out fizbozilla.com. But hey, you hear the music? You know what that means? That's my cue. We'll be back in a few. Sit tight on the other side of this very short break. We are going to dive into the Mr. Mortgage Show. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of The Mr. Mortgage Show, and I'm going to interrupt this commercial break to ask you for a favor. If you know any friends, family, coworkers, or the guy in front of you at the grocery line who's talking or thinking about buying or selling or refinancing real estate, I'm hoping I can count on you to help me spread the word, introduce them to me, to the team. You can do that by simply sharing MrMortgageRadio.com. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. Guys, it's Mark Itell, NMLS 1929005. Now, back to the commercials. Raise your hand if you are freaked out by what's happening in the banking world. Well, no, no, put your hands back on the steering wheel. It's all starting to feel like a house of cards. And what about that 17 billion, yes, billion with a B, dollars worth of bondholder money that was lost in that Credit Suisse takeover? 
Right now I'm hearing more and more people talk about a flight to safety and they're looking at gold and silver and other precious metals, but also rental property. Yep, income producing rental property is starting to become sexy again. Guys, we've got an amazing loan program called the Landlord Loan. It's an easy way to acquire rental property. If you've got good credit and the assets, we don't even look at your personal income. We look at the income produced by the property. Assuming that it supports the debt, boom, you're a landlord. Check us out at MrMortgageRadio.com. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. My name is Mark Itell, NMLS 1929005. And my team and I are here and happy to help. Check us out at MrMortgageRadio.com. As a realtor, I have a bunch of mortgage brokers to choose from, but I prefer to work with Mark and his Mr. Mortgage team. In this crazy market, there is no room for error, especially on the mortgage side. Mark's team moves fast, keeps everybody in the loop, and makes things happen. They always get my clients a great deal and take the time to walk them through every step of the process. When you're considering a lender, I encourage you to talk to Mark Itell and the Mr. Mortgage team. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now at 855-462-7292. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell, and you are tuned into the Mr. Mortgage Show. If you have questions or comments along the way, just call or text 855-462-7292. That's the Anytime Hotline, and Jen will get your questions on the air. Again, call or text 855-462-7292, and uh, she will take care of you. If you prefer to shoot her an email, just visit MrMortgageRadio.com. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. Scroll to the bottom of the page. Click that email icon and you can shoot her your question that way. And I know we kicked an ant pile with that for sale by owner thing at the beginning because I've already seen a couple questions pop in. So keep them coming, guys. I'm excited about that. And again, I'm not anti-agent. I think it makes a lot of sense a lot of the time. And I have a network of the very best agents nationwide that I'm super, super excited to work with every day and introduce you to should you wish to go that route. But for the guy who goes to Home Depot on Sunday morning and loads his pickup truck full of wood and builds his own deck and does his own landscaping and remodels his own kitchen, guys, if this speaks to you and you want to go this route, just check that website out. There's a lot of resources there. The book is there. You can download the book. You don't have to fill out a form. There's no catch. There's no gimmick. There's no anything. Just go to fsbozilla.com and get yourself a copy of the book. Check it out. See what you think. Let me know what you think. I'm super curious. I'm, I appreciate any feedback anybody can uh, offer. But anyway, let's uh, throw it over to Jen and get some questions on the air. Jen, you ready? Okay. What do you have? Rich sent us this. Are there any banks offering an equity line on a rental property? My bank says no. I want to pull out some money to buy another rental. Hey, Rich, that's a great question. There are some wholesale lenders that will do an equity line on an investment property. So I would need to know a little bit more if you could shoot me the property details and the current loan amount. We'll run a value report for you and then see how much equity you have. The loan to values or the or the combined loan to values on equity lines for investment properties are a little bit lower. And most banks, as you're finding out, prefer to only provide equity lines on primary residences. But, you know, the cash out refi strategy with the landlord loan is also a good way to go that route if you want to pull some equity out. And you could go interest only and maximize your cash flow on the property and then pull some equity out to buy another one. But great question. I hope that helps. If you need more info, I'd I'd welcome the opportunity to talk off the air and I can dig a little deeper for you. Hey, Jen, throw me another question. Dana sent us this question. Is it possible to use the landlord loan to buy a triplex and move into one of the apartments? I have good credit and make decent money. I just don't show much income on my tax returns, and I'm looking for a no-income loan option. Hey, Dana, that is a great question. Sadly, no, that won't work because the landlord loan requires that you sign an affidavit saying you're not going to live in the property. And I get it, right? Two of the three uh, units in the triplex are truly investment properties, but because your income is not being underwritten, they're looking at all three of those rental income streams. So yeah, sadly that won't work for you to buy a primary residence. 
The good news is, though, that there are programs, some that are truly no income, but they do require a bigger down payment. But the bank statement loan programs may work for you depending on how much of your income actually flows through your bank account. Could we take 12 or 24 months worth of bank statements and average the deposits and use that as an alternative income verification. Those programs exist and that's exactly what they're designed for. So I would encourage you to go that route. And if you're not working with anybody, I'd love a shot at it. And guys, for anybody out there who's curious, if you can hear my voice, we could be your choice because our team is everywhere the show is. So um, I do the show out of our headquarters in Florida, but our team is scattered all over the country and we're adding people to the team every day. So Dana, brilliant question. And I would love to uh, talk to you a little bit more about that. But uh, on the surface, no, the landlord loan most likely won't help you with this scenario, but there may be some solutions. So, hey, Jen, yeah, go ahead. Peter wants to know, so this by owner thing sounds interesting. How will we advertise the house online if we're not listed with a realtor? Is there an extra cost for getting online? Is this like a flat fee listing agreement? Hey, Peter. No, this has no, nothing to do with charging you anything to list your property. There's no, there's no hidden anything in it. And to answer your question, with getting your property advertised online, the big websites like the Zillow's will allow you to submit a for sale by owner at no charge. You can get it out there in front of all the eyes. And when you do that, you're going to get a ton of phone calls, a ton of them from real estate agents who say, hey, I want to list your property for you. But that's how you get the exposure. The sites provide that for you. So I'm happy to walk you through it. That's part of the program. There's a guide on how to, how to upload your property to Zillow for free. And then the other thing a lot of people get super confused with when they're going this route is how to price the property because you see the Zestimate and you're like, oh my God, that Zestimate's not correct. Well, there's also a way that you can go in there and modify your listing to show the updates, to show the addition, to show the new roof. So the Zestimate will do its very best to give you an accurate value. But one thing we're doing is we are using the free value report service that we have in our lending practice. We run them every day we're running those for people as a baseline value so they can see, you know, the likelihood of their property appraising for the number that they have it listed for. So I hope that helps, Peter. I appreciate that question. I see a few more around this topic, so I'm super excited to talk about it with, with you because I think as we move forward into uncertainty, a lot of people are giving this some serious consideration and we're in a, you know, slightly flattening appreciation cycle, although some markets are still, you know, 10, 8, 10, 12%. As the appreciation cycle flattens, every dollar becomes more valuable. So people are trying to capitalize. And God forbid we start to go down in value, then this buy owner strategy is going to become super valuable because that commission piece is no longer in the equation. But but guys, I'm happy to answer any questions. It's not for everybody, guys. It's not for everybody. Some people just aren't cut out for it. And I totally, totally get it. And that was me when I was underneath the car cursing, trying to fix it that day. But I got it fixed and I saved a load of money. So I understand. But anyway, thanks for that question. You hear the music, guys. You know what that means? That's my cue. We'll be back in a few. Sit tight on the other side of this very short break. We'll be back with more of the show. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show, and I'm going to interrupt this commercial break to ask you for a favor. If you know any friends, family, coworkers, or the guy in front of you at the grocery line who's talking or thinking about buying or selling or refinancing real estate, I'm hoping I can count on you to help me spread the word, introduce them to me, to the team. You can do that by simply sharing MrMortgageRadio.com. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. Guys, it's Mark Itell, NMLS 1929005. Now, back to the commercials. So you think interest rates have gotten too high to refi? Well, not so fast. There are several reasons people refinance. Sure, lowering your interest rate is one, but there's debt consolidation, home improvement, unexpected medical expenses, pulling out some equity to go buy an investment property. Heck, I even know of one guy who refinanced his house so he could buy his mistress a condo. But let's jump back to debt consolidation for a minute. I'm working with a client right now. His name is Ben. 
He's going to refinance his house, pay off a host of credit cards and two truck payments. And yes, his mortgage interest rate is going to go up, but his monthly expenses are going to go down significantly. And that monthly savings is going to get he and his family back on track. Guys, if you've got questions, check us out at MrMortgageRadio.com. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. My name is Mark Itell, NMLS 1929005. I host the Mr. Mortgage Show, and we are always here and happy to help. Check us out at MrMortgageRadio.com. Here's another five-star review. We started our loan with a different company. They said we were approved, but at the last minute they told us there was a problem. I still don't know what went wrong, but thankfully our real estate agent told us about Mark. I was pretty stressed, but it's the perfect house so we gave Mark a shot. He got it done. I'm not sure what was different but I don't really care. We even got a better interest rate and with less money out of pocket than the first guy quoted us. It was a great surprise. Yes, I'm happy to recommend Mark and his Mr. Mortgage team. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now at 855-462-7292. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itel. This is the Mr. Mortgage Show, and we are driven by your questions and comments. So keep them coming. Man, great questions so far, and I know Jen has some more over there, but... Guys, we always, always have room for more questions. So call or text 855-462-7292. That's 855-462-7292. That is the Anytime Hotline. Jen will get your questions on the air. If you prefer to shoot us an email, check out MrMortgageRadio.com. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. Scroll to the bottom of the page, click that email icon, and you can shoot her your questions that way. And guys, we try to move fast and get to everybody's questions. And if you feel like something was missed or you didn't get all of it or we sparked additional questions, check out Mr. Mortgage Radio. Guys, there's links to all the data that we reference, all of the resources, and our contact info is there. So if you need us when we're not on the air, MrMortgageRadio.com is where you want to go to find us. But hey, let's keep it rolling. Jen, throw me another question. Eric sent this in. I know you mentioned this on your podcast, but I can't find it. I'm getting divorced. It's not final, but I want to buy a new home for my wife. Isn't there a form we can sign that keeps the new house out of the divorce? Hey, Eric. Thank you, brother, for listening to the podcast, which you can find at MrMortgageRadio.com. Shameless plug, but I appreciate that, my man. Um, Yes, there is a form. You're going to have to go through the attorneys, though. And basically, it's you said you're buying your wife the house. So you are giving up your claim to that as part of the, the marital settlement. You're taking that asset outside of the settlement. So it's usually a single page. Sometimes it's two, depending on the attorney who drafted it, whether they charge you by the word or not. But yes, that's going to need to be part of the entire process. The, the lender is going to need to see that. Everybody's going to need to see that document so that you can't come back later and lay claim to a portion of that as a marital asset. So yes, sir, you can do it. I would consult your attorney. I don't know what the form is called, waiver of, I don't remember. It doesn't come up that often, but when it does, it's a pretty simple solution. So I hope that helps. And thank you again for checking out the podcast. Hey, Jen, toss me another question. Randy sent us this one. We're seriously considering a reverse mortgage. My neighbor is telling me it's a scam and my kids will inherit a bunch of debt. He also says I can lose my Medicare. Is this true? Hey, that was Randy. Hey, Randy. Great, great, great question. Triple great question of the day. Um, So there are so, so many misconceptions around the reverse mortgage. And in addition to this whole buy owner thing, and assumable mortgages, the interest in reverse mortgages has jumped quite a bit lately because of the inflation, the cost of living, and the fixed income senior just having a difficult time keeping up. So I greatly appreciate this question because I know it applies to far, far more people than just you. So I appreciate getting a chance to talk about this on the air. So as far as your kids inheriting a bunch of debt, they're gonna have to pay off the loan, right? It's like any other loan. If you have a mortgage on your property and you die, the kids are going to have to pay that mortgage off or sell the property and pay that mortgage off to settle the estate. It's it's a lien on the property. And that's all this is. Um, The difference is this balance grows 
a traditional balance goes down, but your obligation to pay it doesn't change. So in that aspect, yes, the kids are going to have to deal with the debt, but it's no different than the debt of a forward mortgage, if you will, on a property. And if the property doesn't cover the debt, if for some reason you owe more than it's worth, there's no obligation for them to repay it. They slide the keys across the desk to the bank and the bank deals with it. It's a federally insured loan program that's non-recourse to the heirs or to the borrower if it goes upside down. So that's a misconception. The other thing, as far as Medicare, Medicare and Medicaid are two hugely different things. And Medicaid may be affected by the reverse mortgage because it's based on your eligibility is based on your financial circumstances. And while the proceeds from the reverse mortgage aren't treated as income from a tax standpoint, it may affect social programs like Medicaid, but that's very different than Medicare. Your Medicare should not be affected by the reverse mortgage. But I say that encouraging you to reach out to your financial planner. And if you don't have one, shoot me an email and I'll shoot you the AARP resources because they've got counselors you can talk with. But huge misconceptions around the program in general. And those are two of them. So I appreciate you bringing those up. Hey, Jen, throw me another question. Claire is asking, a couple weeks ago, you talked about a landlord loan that had an interest only option. Can you explain how this works and if it's a good idea? Hey, Claire, thanks for that. I think I talked about that a little earlier in the show today, too. Um, So, yes, the interest only option on the landlord loan is that it's interest only for the first 10 years. So whatever interest rate that you close at, it stays that interest rate for 40 years. The first 10 years are interest only. And then the first payment of the 11th year starts the 30 year fixed rate amortization schedule. So the payment goes up, but the rate doesn't. The payment goes up because you're now paying principal and interest. So in relation to the second part of that question, is it a good idea? It's a good idea if you're trying to maximize cash flow and you're not concerned with principal reduction because you're just paying interest. Now, That's not to say you couldn't prepay principal if you wanted to, but from the standpoint of the maximum cash flow generated each month, it's something a lot of investors like because a lot of times their strategy doesn't hold the property longer than 10 years anyway. So they're trying to maximize the cash flow. So from that standpoint, a lot of the investors prefer that side of the program. And then knowing that if they do hold the property in year 11, it just becomes a 30 year fixed rate loan. So I hope that answers the question. That's a brilliant question. So I'm, you know, kudos to you for reading between the lines because the rate doesn't increase, but the payment does because now suddenly it's principal and interest versus interest only. And guys, if you want to calculate what an interest only payment looks like, it's super simple. Take the loan amount times the interest rate divided by 12. And that's the calculation for an interest only mortgage payment. And then you can see if there's a benefit for the cash flow. And if you want to do the 30 year amortized calculation, go to Mr. Mortgage Radio and click on that mortgage calculator link. And you could play and plug all kinds of numbers in there and see what the payment's going to adjust to. And then look at the difference, what it would be interest only for 10 years versus a 30 year fully amortized fixed rate from the beginning and see if it makes sense for you. But brilliant, brilliant question. I certainly appreciate it. And guys, we talked about a strategy where people were extracting equity out of their current home because there's so much of it now and buying a property and renting it out so they had a home for their child later in life and they'll hold that property for 10 or 15 years and then sell it to their kids with a gift of equity. Otherwise, the kids are stuck in the the basement eating Hot Pockets for the rest of their lives because, man, the next generation is going to have a hard time qualifying for a property. So there are folks out there that are utilizing that strategy too. So I wanted to throw that out there, but Guys, you hear the music, you know what that means. That's my cue. We'll be back in a few. Sit tight on the other side of this short break. We'll be back with more of the show. 
Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show, and I'm going to interrupt this commercial break to ask you for a favor. If you know any friends, family, coworkers, or the guy in front of you at the grocery line who's talking or thinking about buying or selling or refinancing real estate, I'm hoping I can count on you to help me spread the word, introduce them to me, to the team. You can do that by simply sharing MrMortgageRadio.com. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. Guys, it's Mark Itell, NMLS 1929005. Now, back to the commercials. Raise your hand if you are freaked out by what's happening in the banking world. Well, no, no, put your hands back on the steering wheel. It's all starting to feel like a house of cards. And what about that 17 billion, yes, billion with a B, dollars worth of bondholder money that was lost in that Credit Suisse takeover? Right now, I'm hearing more and more people talk about a flight to safety, and they're looking at gold and silver and other precious metals, but also rental property. Yep, income-producing rental property is starting to become sexy again. Guys, we've got an amazing loan program called the Landlord Loan. It's an easy way to acquire rental property. If you've got good credit and the assets, we don't even look at your personal income. We look at the income produced by the property. Assuming that it supports the debt, boom, you're a landlord. Check us out at MrMortgageRadio.com. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. My name is Mark Itell, NMLS 1929005. And my team and I are here and happy to help. Check us out at MrMortgageRadio.com. As a realtor, I have a bunch of mortgage brokers to choose from, but I prefer to work with Mark and his Mr. Mortgage team. In this crazy market, there is no room for error, especially on the mortgage side. Mark's team moves fast, keeps everybody in the loop, and makes things happen. They always get my clients a great deal and take the time to walk them through every step of the process. When you're considering a lender, I encourage you to talk to Mark Itell and the Mr. Mortgage team. Tired of realtor commissions gobbling up your hard-earned equity? Say hello to Fizbozilla, the commission killer. Fizbozilla is your free, no-obligation resource for selling your home by owner. Yes, you heard it right. Free. No gimmicks, no catches. Just everything you need for a successful for-sale-by-owner process from start to finish. Check out fsbozilla.com. You'll never have to show your home to a time waster, tire kicker, or unqualified buyer. And say goodbye to those pushy realtors trying to snatch your listing. No more untimely calls. No more uninvited strangers. Ever wonder who they're letting into your house? Grab your free copy of the book, Fizzbozilla the Commission Killer today. Keep your equity where it belongs, in your pocket. Sell it yourself. Save thousands. Visit fsbozilla.com. Fizzbozilla the Commission Killer. That's fsbozilla.com. Here's another five-star review. My wife and I own a small business. And the way our accountant file our taxes we don't show much income on tax returns. Because of this it looks as if we don't make the money. This was a problem for our bank when we applied for a mortgage. But not for Mark. He verifies our income by using our monthly bank statements. Mark and his Mr. Mortgage team made a big difference for me. Yes I am happy to recommend Mr. Mortgage Mark. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now at 855-462-7292. All right. My name is Mark Itell, and this is the Mr. Mortgage Show. Guys, you are bringing the heat. Some great, great questions so far. Man, oh, man. We've talked about debt consolidation, reverse mortgage. Maybe not debt consolidation, did we? I don't know, reverse mortgages, the investor program, the landlord loan, the for sale by owner strategy. Man, we've talked about a lot of great stuff. Let's keep that rolling. Hey, if you've got questions or comments, just call or text 855-462-7292. That's 855-462-7292. That is the Anytime Hotline. Jen is womaning the hotline and she will get your questions on the air. If you prefer to shoot us an email, just head over to MrMortgageRadio.com. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. Scroll to the bottom of the page, click that email icon, and you can shoot your questions over that way. And you're going to scroll past a whole bunch of good stuff, like the drugstore makes you walk all the way to the back corner to get the Advil. We make you walk, scroll past all those great links to get to that email 
it's not quite as complicated as the drugstore, but the email link is on the bottom of the page. But anyway, you can always shoot your questions that way. And guys, when we're not on the air, if you need us or you need access to some of the resources that we talk about, bookmark that website, mrmortgageradio.com. Everything's there, guys. I do my very best each week to link up all the data that we talk about on the show. As I mentioned, in the opening segment with the Fed saying, you know, he doesn't anticipate easing interest rates until 2025. That was pretty eye opening. And uh, that interview is on the Mr. Mortgage Facebook page. So go to Mr. Mortgage Radio, click the Facebook icon and uh, smile or cry. But there it is for all of us to see. And guys, like my buddy in the opening segment who overthinks what club he's going to hit on the golf course and then chunks it right into the water anyway, Watching some of this data, other than for sport and fun, it's really like overanalyzing a club selection. You know, we all need a place to live. We all need to keep marching our lives forward. And we just have to do the very best we can with the data of the day because tomorrow is unknown. Guys, if you've listened to the show for any length of time, at the end of 2021, all the smart people were saying interest rates weren't going to go past the high threes. And we came out with a prediction of the high fives to low sixes. And everybody thought we were smoking the Jamaican cigars and that we were crazy. Well, guys, rates went over seven. So suddenly we looked like we had a crystal ball but we were, you know, just looking at the data. Well, the beginning of this year, they were saying by the end of the second quarter, rates are going to fall back close to or beneath five. Well, guys, we're over seven again. So my point in that isn't that we're geniuses. Uh, my point is that you've got to deal with the data of the day. Prepare for the hurricane. Pack your parachute before you get on the plane. Hope for the best, but govern yourselves accordingly. So anyway, guys, I'm not going to get too philosophical. This is all about your questions, and they're my favorite part of the show. So let me throw it over to Jen for another question. You ready? Okay, Jen, what do you have? Neil sent this. What are some tips on getting our offer accepted when we have an FHA loan? Our agent says it's unlikely to happen. Well, Neil, my first suggestion would be to call the Mr. Mortgage team because all kidding aside, we go out of our way to present a pre-approval like none other. There's a video that accompanies the pre-approval letter, letting the selling agent know that you've been fully under it. And that would be my very first suggestion. Have your lender fully underwrite you, get your DU or LP approval, go through the automated underwriting system, and then have your lender convey that to the listing agent. And it's a simple phone call. Hey, Mr. and Mrs. Listing Agent, uh, my client is presenting an offer through Mr. or Mrs. Buying Agent. I want you to know we've verified income, we've verified assets, we've verified credit, we've taken them all the way through the underwriting. We've got an approval pending the property. And have them put that in a video, shoot that video over via email with your pre approval and let the seller know that FHA should not be a hurdle, not a concern that you're a weak borrower because you're going FHA because guys, the interest rates are better for FHA. You know, there's a lot of reasons people go FHA. It's not just because it's your only choice. We've had borrowers putting 10, 15% down that still benefited from FHA. So communication is the big thing, my man. Communication, have your lending team dive into communication head first and just let the sellers know that you are fully qualified. The program should be irrelevant and we're winning with FHA every week and more and more people are accepting them. That attitude that VA and FHA is getting pushed aside is so 2021 and 2022. I think you'll find more success than you realize. So good luck, brother. If you need help or a second opinion, you can always reach out to us. Hey, Jen, throw me another question. Felicia sent us an email. What happens with a reverse mortgage if we want to downsize later? Are we able to sell the house or are we stuck living there until we die? Hey, Felicia, thank you for this. Another gigantic misconception. I think we need to do a show just on reverse mortgages because they are so, so misunderstood. Brilliant, brilliant question. I'm not, you know, this isn't, this isn't aiming at you by any means. There's just so much confusion 
around the loan program. And we talked to our friends at the breakfast diner or at the clubhouse and we're getting bad information and we're getting, you know, hearsay. So brilliant question, Felicia. No, you're not locked into that house indefinitely. There's no prepayment penalty on a reverse mortgage. So in the future, should you wish to downsize, you can sell the property, pay off the loan, take the equity and go buy another property or go rent a property or move into an assisted living facility or one of those managed care facilities. Um, Some of those facilities are amazing now. It's like living on a cruise ship, except you're behind the gates of some really nice real estate, but the activities and the sense of community, I think is what brings a lot of people into those uh, neighborhoods. I know my mother was leaning towards that option because she lives in the same home that she raised us all in and the neighbors have all changed they're all young families again and she feels she loves her neighbors they're awesome people but she feels just kind of out of out of place there's no one like her in the neighborhood anymore it's all a bunch of young kids and young families and she's you know the old lady on the block and she's not an old lady mentally my my mom's amazing so mom if you hear this Uh, You are an amazing woman. But anyway, yeah. So to answer your question, you can sell, you can refi, you can, the only thing you can't do is move out of it and rent it. It has to remain your primary residence. But I hope that answers the question, Felicia. And if anybody has questions about the reverse mortgage, go to moreaboutreverse.com and request the booklet, guys. I'll send you the booklet. You can read through it. It'll answer a lot of the preliminary questions. And we are always, always available to deep dive it if you'd like. It's a, it's a conversation worth having for sure. So appreciate that one, Felicia. Hey, Jen, throw me another question. Jessica sent a text. What was the name of the How to Sell Without an Agent website? <laughs> Thanks. Fizzbozilla, Zilla, Zilla. Yes, I am the genius behind that name. F-S-B-O-Z-I-L-L-A.com. And the book cover is a big blue Godzilla, but it's a friendly Godzilla. So fizbozilla.com is the website where you can get a copy of that book. So I appreciate that. Guys, we're having fun with that. And guys, I didn't realize how well that would be received. A lot of people are giving this serious consideration, but they don't know where to start. And if that's you, a good starting point is that book. I mean, there's 17 or 18 chapters of the common pitfalls and some workarounds to those pitfalls. And the intent is to just give you enough information to make the next decision. Is that something you want to pursue? Because guys, I say it all the time. The foundation of a transaction is the agent. And I'm not advocating against using an agent. I am proud to endorse the Really Great Agents Network and refer you to a really great agent if you need one. But as I mentioned with that story about fixing the car, it wasn't easy, but it was simple. Once I knew how to do it and I knew the steps and I knew how long it was going to take because I was being guided by a group of people who had already done it, I was able to save myself a load of money and avoid having to ship that car to and from the only shop on the East Coast I could find that could service it. So... that's the spirit in which we're promoting this. And I'm excited. I'm happy to help anybody who needs that information. So that would be the starting point. Uh, F-S-B-O-Z-I-L-L-A.com. Read the book and then take it from there if you want to go down that path. Oh boy, guys, you hear the music. You know what that means. Uh, That's my cue. We'll be back in a few. Sit tight. This is going to be a short break. We'll be right back with more of the Mr. Mortgage Show. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show, and I'm going to interrupt this commercial break to ask you for a favor. If you know any friends, family, coworkers, or the guy in front of you at the grocery line who's talking or thinking about buying or selling or refinancing real estate, I'm hoping I can count on you to help me spread the word, introduce them to me, to the team. You can do that by simply sharing MrMortgageRadio.com. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. Guys, it's Mark Itell, NMLS 1929005. Now, back to the commercials. Tired of realtor commissions gobbling up your hard-earned equity? Say hello to Fizbozilla, the commission killer. Fizbozilla is your free no-obligation resource for selling your home by owner. Yes, you heard it right. 
free, no gimmicks, no catches, just everything you need for a successful for sale by owner process from start to finish. Check out fsbozilla.com. You'll never have to show your home to a time waster, tire kicker, or unqualified buyer. And say goodbye to those pushy realtors trying to snatch your listing. No more untimely calls. No more uninvited strangers. Ever wonder who they're letting into your house? Grab your free copy of the book, Fizzbozilla the Commission Killer today. Keep your equity where it belongs, in your pocket. Sell it yourself, save thousands, visit fsbozilla.com. Fizzbozilla, the commission killer. That's fsbozilla.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now at 855-462-7292. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell. This is the Mr. Mortgage Show. Guys, if you have questions or comments, just call or text 855-462-7292. That's 855-462-7292. Or head on over to mrmortgageradio.com, scroll to the bottom of the page, click the email icon, and you can shoot your questions over that way, mrmortgageradio.com. But speaking of you and your questions, I know Jen's got a few more back there. So Jen, let's keep this rolling. I'm ready. Tammy has a question. I'm selling my mom's condo by owner. You were just talking about a FISBO program. I'm getting jerked around by people who can't even get a mortgage. (laughs) How can I get more info about this program? Hey, Tammy, great, great question. F-S-B-O-Z-I-L-L-A dot com. Oh, I'm going to write a song, right? Remember that song? S-A-T-U-R-D-A-Y. Nights. <laughs> uh, let me try that. F-S-B-O-Z-I-L. I guess I'm not ready to sing the URL yet, but F-S-B-O-Z-I-L-L-A, Fizbozilla.com is where you find more info. And Tammy, this is what I'm talking about. The number one reason for sale by owner transactions never get over the finish line is unqualified buyers. And it's not your fault. You don't know what questions to ask. You don't know what forms to review. A lot of individuals don't want to give the seller the documentation needed to verify that they're approved. I totally, totally get it. There's so many nuances around the financing piece. When is the deposit forfeitable, right? When does the, when does the buyer's deposit become non-refundable? These are all things as a for sale by owner wrapped around the financing that you need to be aware of. What happens if it doesn't appraise? What happens if the home inspection shows a bunch of problems? So check out FSBOZilla, not Zillow, FSBOZilla, like Godzilla, Dot com and get your copy of the book. And then let's have a conversation if there's anything of interest or if it sparks another question. But I appreciate it. Let's keep it rolling. Jen, what do you have? Elaine just sent this. I tried the buy owner route a few months ago and all I got were calls from realtors wanting to list my house. I ended up taking it off the market for the season. I'm ready to put it back on, but wonder how to avoid all the realtor calls. Any advice? (laughs) Wow. We have kicked an ant pile with this one, right? Gosh, I had no idea how many people were so passionate about this topic. Yes, it's in the book. Check it out. F-S-B-O-Z-I-L-L-A.com. Elaine, grab your free copy of the book. You don't have to fill out a form. You don't have to pay shipping. It's a download. You can read. Actually, it's a flip book. You can read it online or we can send you a PDF copy of it, but it's all in there. Man, I'm having fun with this. Hey, Jen, throw me another question. Oh, sorry, Elaine. Thank you for that question. Uh, Jen, throw me another one. Letty sent us this one. My cousin wants to buy a house, but he's not all the way through the immigration process yet. He only has an ITIN number. Are there any options for him? Will me co-signing help? Hey, Oh, sorry. (laughs) Hey, Letty, that's a great question. Um, There are options. There are a variety of programs. Does he have a visa? What is the visa classification? What's his visa status? That makes a big, big difference. But just having the ITIN, and guys, for anybody out there who's scratching their head, that's individual taxpayer identification number. That's what somebody going through the process gets prior to obtaining a social security number. It's so that they can earn money and pay taxes in 
the U.S. So I would just need to know what his immigration status and visa class is to determine which programs would qualify. But yes, there are a host of programs that are available and some may benefit from you being a cosigner. Some may not require it at all, but I would need a lot more information to give you a concise answer and I welcome the conversation. So just reach out when we're not on the air and uh, walk me through a few of the details and I can point you in the right direction. All right, Jen, what do you have? Teddy is asking, what do we need to be aware of if we are trying to sell our house without a real estate agent? We need to make as much as possible when we sell to make our move to Georgia. Hey, where were all you do-it-yourselfers when I was trying to fix that darn car during COVID? I was so alone over there working on that thing. Hey, Teddy, it's, again, I hate to just keep throwing it up there. It's in the book fsbozilla.com get your copy of the book but to answer your question it's really around the financing i would want to make sure that they are fully approved not pre-qualified i'd want to see the approval and if it was me i would call the bank or the mortgage company and have that conversation you know you heard me mention it earlier in the show that detailed interaction between the seller or the selling party and the lender to confirm the quality of that approval. I mean, that would be where I would start. And if you get the documentation and you want somebody to look at it for you, no obligation. I don't care if we're the mortgage company or not. I'm happy to review it and just let you know, yes, this is a bona fide approval and not a pre-qualification because a pre-qualification is meaningless, guys. A pre-qualification often is just verbal and it'll say right on there, none of this information will has been verified. And it's as simple as somebody calling and saying, hey, I make 125000 a year. I have 85000 in the bank and my credit score is a 763. Am I qualified? And the lender says, yeah, you're pre-qualified. Here's a pre-qualification letter. That's as far as they've gone. And you don't want to sign a contract, take your house off the market, let strangers troop in and out of the house with just that level of documentation because it's truly truly meaningless in the grand scheme of things. So guys, that's why we did this. That's why we created this program because people are starting the process. Like I did, I talked about it in the opening. I thought I could figure this out. And thankfully I was working on a car that wasn't moving, that didn't have to pack its stuff, that didn't have to go buy another car. It was just a car in my garage that didn't run and I was trying to figure out how to fix it. And until somebody gave me the guidance, I didn't know what the heck I was doing. And as soon as I had the guidance, I was able to do it. And I saved myself a ton of money because as I mentioned, my only option on that 60 year old car that I've been restoring was to ship it out have it fixed and ship it back. That was more money than the cost of the car. It made zero sense to me. So I cobbled on it and tried to fix it. And the answer was super simple, not easy. It was a pain in the butt. It was three Modellos, a busted knuckle and some cursing, but I got it fixed because I followed the instructions that somebody gave me. So guys, that's why we did this because of that experience being played out over and over again in the world of real estate. So I appreciate that question. Thanks for that. Go ahead, Jen. Let's squeeze in one more. Donna sent us an email. What is the minimum credit score for the REC refinance? I have a lot of equity, but I'm falling behind on some of my bills. Hey, Donna. Okay. This is a great, great question. Now, are you already behind and your credit's been damaged? That would be my first question. Because guys, if you feel the pinch coming, divorce that 3% interest rate and preserve your credit and pay your bills off. Because if you wait too long, you may not qualify. But to Donna's question, you know, you want to be somewhere around a 620 or higher credit score because lower than that, you're going to be scrutinized on how much cash you can take out. The good news is with debt consolidation, we can take the debt out of your debt to income ratio before you close, which helps a lot of people qualify. So um, let's have that conversation off the air if you want to go deep. But uh, if you're a 620 or higher, you might have a fighting chance at it. But guys, you hear the music, you know what that means? Man, oh man, I have rambled my way through another episode of the Mr. Mortgage Show. Gosh, time flies. Hey guys, if you need us when we're not on the air, MrMortgageRadio.com is the easiest way to find us. MrMortgageRadio.com. Otherwise, we are out of here. 
Jen is waving me out of the studio. Guys, have an amazing week. We'll be back next week right here, same time, same station. Until then, MrMortgageRadio.com is how you find us. Be good. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show, and I'm going to interrupt this commercial break to ask you for a favor. If you know any friends, family, coworkers, or the guy in front of you at the grocery line who's talking or thinking about buying or selling or refinancing real estate, I'm hoping I can count on you to help me spread the word, introduce them to me, to the team. You can do that by simply sharing MrMortgageRadio.com. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. Guys, it's Mark Itell, NMLS 1929005. Now, back to the commercials.